the relationship between SpaceX and the FAA during the development of the Starship rocket has been marked by significant tension and conflict, reflecting the challenges of balancing rapid innovation with regulatory oversight. While there have been some signs of progress recently, tensions continue to arise as SpaceX pushes for a rapid pace of Starship launch, especially as its fifth flight approaches. This has led to SpaceX's final decision to delay Starship Flight 5 launch date. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Following the successes of Flight 4 in early June, SpaceX is preparing Ship 30 and Booster 12 for Flight 5. All this is taking place while an incredible amount of infrastructure is being created and worked on at Starbase, most notably the rise of the second launch tower at the launch site. The stacking progress of the brand new tower has snowballed as on August 1st, Module 5 was finally up and the next elevator mast part up was lifted one day later. With the current pace, SpaceX will likely finish stacking the tower before mid-August as the FAA said, followed by installing the Mechazilla arm to catch the Super Heavy. There were previously some speculations that the new launch tower would soon be active to catch Super Heavy in Flight 5. However, that is unlikely because the infrastructure needed for that maneuver is inherently so complex that it would be difficult to fully install the new launch complex on time. The available option is the current tower, even though the first catch attempt could risk the existing structures. If successful, it would be a big step toward the goal of fully reusing Starship. Otherwise, the time gap between Flight 5 and Flight 6 would be significantly extended. It's not only because of recovering the damaged infrastructure, but also the FAA's lengthy regulatory process. Therefore, to decrease the risk, a lot of work needs to be done at present, and of course, it should take a lot of time. Flight 5's launch date has fluctuated in recent months to accommodate the progress of the work. Musk had initially mentioned on June 15th that the company aimed to attempt the launch in late July, but subsequent updates have suggested that the timeline has shifted due to ongoing preparations and the need for FAA licensing. On July 5th, Musk said via X that the mission would lift off in four weeks, indicating the new window launch in early August. This was quickly changed since his interview streamed live on July 29th. During the interview, he unveiled a new launch date in early September, which is a significant delay even though everything will probably be ready in about two to three weeks. It's because they still have to wait for the FAA's green light. When Starship will be ready, it's probably, probably is about two or three weeks, but uh, then, then depends on when we get the FAA license. So it's probably end of August is my guess, earliest. Um, and it may go to early September, just depends on, on how fast the FAA grants our license. Honestly, it was necessary to postpone Flight 5 by a month, giving SpaceX more time to prepare thoroughly. In July, the Flight 5 hardware pair underwent hot static fire testing. After the static fire, there are wet dress rehearsals and other preparations, including the installation of the FTS system, preparing the launch pad, and fueling. All of them usually take about a week to complete. But the biggest hurdle is always the FAA, and it's unclear how much of a to-do list there is for approval for Starship Flight 5. However, there has been some good news recently. In a June statement sent to Valley Central, the FAA stated it would not require an investigation into the SpaceX Starship Flight 4 mission after assessing the operations. All flight events for both the Starship vehicle and the Super Heavy booster appear to have occurred within the scope of planned and authorized activities, the FAA stated. This means SpaceX can proceed with another Starship test flight much sooner, as long as Starship is ready. The fourth flight successfully demonstrated key objectives, including the controlled descent of both the Starship and Super Heavy booster, marking a significant step forward for SpaceX in its testing program. The FAA has also approved specific exceptions that allow SpaceX to avoid investigations for certain types of vehicle failures, provided they do not impact public safety. This includes failures related to the thermal protection system, vehicle flaps, and Raptor engines during landing. This has been applied since before Flight 4 happened on June 6. In April, the commercial space company requested the FAA make a public safety determination about the craft's third flight rather than wait for a full mishap investigation report. 
SpaceX requested the review so it could continue Starship operations before the investigation into the last flight was finalized. With the optimistic news mentioned above, we hope that the FAA will soon turn the green light for Starship's fifth flight. The FAA's scrutiny of SpaceX's initial Starship flights, particularly the first three, stemmed from the vehicle's developmental stage and the significant challenges faced during those missions. The agency's investigations were primarily focused on ensuring public safety and addressing the numerous issues that arose during these early test flights. That's in theory, and in fact there are many things on the table. Most notably, remember Starship's first launch attempt last year, which destroyed its launch pad in an explosion similar to a volcanic eruption that sent huge chunks of concrete high into the sky. The OLM's volcanic eruption has placed SpaceX in hot water for a while, including grounding Starship for seven months, as it involves public safety. Following the first flight's failure, the FAA mandated a comprehensive investigation and required SpaceX to implement numerous corrective actions before granting a new launch license. The bottom line is the FAA's slow regulatory processes regarding the Starship program, particularly highlighting frustrations with the agency's handling of paperwork and approvals. SpaceX officials, including Vice President Bill Gerstenmaier, expressed concerns regarding regulatory headwinds and unnecessary bureaucracy. They argue that these delays are not related to public safety, but are instead procedural hurdles that hinder the pace of innovation and testing necessary for the Starship program. Unfortunately, the conflict between SpaceX and the FAA has persisted beyond the vehicle's early development stages. While there have been some signs of progress in their relationship, tensions continue to arise as SpaceX pushes for an increased number of launches, and the FAA maintains its focus on safety and regulatory compliance. On July 29th, the FAA shared its draft environmental assessment for SpaceX's plans to launch as many as 25 Starship orbital launches from its Texas sites in a year. Since this changes the impact that the launches will have on the surrounding environment, the FAA sought comment from the public on SpaceX's plans. Its environmental assessment document outlined that SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy Booster will produce sonic boom, exposures up to 21 PSF for booster landings. The document indicates that booms greater or equal in magnitude to those created by the Super Heavy Booster represents a threshold where prevailing literature indicates window breakage becomes possible for standard condition windows, adds the FAA, with specific window breakage depending on size, age, orientation, surrounding structure, and other effects, according to the regulator. In its release, SpaceX notes that sonic booms were present during NASA's Space Shuttle return and are also a regular part of its Falcon 9 booster landings. It adds that the booms generated by the Super Heavy booster will be more powerful than those generated by Falcon landings. However, SpaceX believes that they will not pose any risk of injury to those in the surrounding areas, since the strongest effects will be localized to the area immediately around the Starbase launch pad. It's so weird that while the FAA usually puts SpaceX's rocket through a much excruciating process of inspection and regulation, they were too hands-off in watching on the ground at Boeing factories and the factory of its primary supplier, Spirit Aerosystems. This contributes to catastrophic accidents on Boeing's airplanes, including the January 5th incident in which a door plug blew off during an Alaska Airlines flight, leaving a gaping hole in the side of the Boeing 737 MAX. FAA Chief Mike Whitaker later admitted that the FAA's approach was too hands-off, too focused on paperwork audits, and not focused enough on inspections. We have changed that approach over the last several months, and those changes are permanent, he said. We have now moved to a more active, comprehensive oversight model, the audit plus inspection approach. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.